This is Larry Williams, and I am um, bullish on the stock market. We've gone down. From here, I think we're going to go up, up, and away. As you recall, the last presentation I did for StockCharts.com was on September 9th, and the market has, in fact, gone down. As you know from back then, we said that would happen. That has taken place. But now, how about this up, up, and away stuff? Are we going to really see something like this? Well, I think so, and I'd like to explain to you why I think that will happen. Uh, the interesting thing about having a viewpoint, I'm recording this in my dear, dear friend, Tom DeMarc's house in Scottsdale, uh, Arizona. Tom's really bearish on the market still. Well, I'm really bullish, but we're still friends. Uh, just because somebody has an opposite view of the market doesn't mean that uh, you have to dislike them. I actually respect people that have an opposite view. Uh, that's how we learn after all. But my view certainly is bullish. And I'm going to show you why. Remember Shakespeare, to be or not to be? Well... If you look at years ending in two, uh, this is 1932, we started a significant bull market in 1932. Oh, we also did that in 1922 as well. Kind of interesting. We look at 1942, the year I was born, another bull market started in 1942, uh, took off way to the upside. Great big up move, despite horrible bearish news at the time because we were in war. 1952 rolled around. In 1952, about April, again, we started a big up move, came back, a massive up move in the 1950s and early 1960s, years ending in two. Now, this phenomenon was first written about by Edgar Lawrence Smith in his book about tides and the affairs of men. And he pointed out there was a decennial pattern that years within a decade, all one years are pretty similar, two years are pretty similar. Well, 1952, years ending in two, usually rally here we were in 1962 the year i began in the marketplace big good slide in the market that's what attracted my attention to it the kennedy roll pack rollback of steel prices and away we went so we've seen 32 42 52 62 all bullish can it be that simple well here's 1972 and in 1972 we started a nice big up move all the way in 72 bullish market in 1982, oh my gosh, look at that. One of the biggest bull markets of all time started in 1982. But the thing is, could that have been predicted? Would Could we have known that in advance? Well, in reality, in the spring of that year, I published uh, How to Prosper in the Coming Good Years and Reputation to Howard Ruff's book, How to Prosper in the Coming Bad Years. I was bullish and well, you know what happened. That's what happened, a big bull market go back. And look what happened in 1982. But when I went on a book tour for this uh, book, did that in the old days, people were so vitriolic, so upset that I was bullish. It kind of reminds me of where we are now. Well, if we go forward in another 10 years to 1992, again, 1992, there's the bottom in October 1992, and stock prices go up again. Oh, go forward to 2002. Here's 2002, late 2002. Go, but again, I know you're probably thinking, well, A, can it be that simple? Could you really know that in advance? Come on, Larry, could you have? Well, interesting story. My book, The Right Stock at the Right Time, came out in 2002. The original title was Blast Off, How to Prosper in the Coming Good Years, Predicting a Bull Market in 2002. But the publisher said, oh, we can't sell a book like that. People aren't bullish. They won't buy the book. So they changed the title of the book. But that book also forecasts a significant low in 2002. Instead, they published another book right at the absolute low in 2002 about how bearish the market was. And the book had great sales, much better sales than mine, because at the time, whatever the news is, that's what people want to eat. They want to hear more of that. Uh, so, But the interesting thing to me is what we knew in advance about 2002. And that book was written a year prior to the market low in 2002. Well, 2012, here's our next opportunity. There's the middle of 2012. And again, high bull market. So cheers to years ending in two. To be or not to be, it looks like something's going on with these years ending in two. Um, but, I, you know, that's nice. That's cycles in this decennial pattern. But I want to look at more than just that. So let's take a look, if you will, at inflation. That's been truly the driving force of what's going on. Uh, everything is about inflation now. The Fed is raising rates because of inflation. Unemployment might go down or up because of inflation. Everybody is so focused on inflation. 
Wait till you see these charts. This is really interesting to me. We're going to look at the inflation analogs. This is the pattern that we've seen of inflation in the past. You're going to see a black line. That's today's CPI index. And you'll see the red line is from the past. So let's look at that. This was inflation in 1974. That's the red line. And here's currently what we've been seeing. Notice the same pattern, the same analog of inflation now, the black line, versus what happened in 1974 and what took place past 1974 as inflation went down. Pretty good fit to that analog. In 1980, we also had inflationary forces in the marketplace. And look what happened. There's a price analog in red of what actually happened in 1980. And here it is in black. What's going on right here, right now? The pattern looks pretty similar. And we see the same thing in 1990. Remember that? We had a pickup of inflation. There's the analog. Here's where we are now. And all of these instances, inflation came down. And I think we're going to see that happen now. That what the Fed has done will, in fact, drive inflation down. And that's bullish for stock prices because, I mean, no more higher interest rates. We also can look at, a, I think, the master inflation cycle. It's about six and a half years, something like that. And if we look at that, we see that we have cyclical peaks about every six years in inflation. And we're right now at a cyclical high. Now, the cycles, of course, just because we go from here to here doesn't mean that's what inflation will do. It's just cyclical high, cyclical low, cyclical low. Cycles don't tell us if we'll go up this a little bit or a whole lot. They just say there's a turn point here and here and here and here. You need to really keep that in mind when you start looking at cycles. That's a really critical thing to keep in mind. So we see that the analog of inflation suggests that we're going to see inflation decline here. The cycles to inflation suggests we're going to see cycles, uh, inflation start to peel off in here, all bullish for stock prices. And speaking of cycles, boy, this cycle theory is going to get tested like never before. I am going way out on a limb here with my bullishness primarily because of cycles, not exclusively. I'm going to show you some more fundamental data in a moment. But every cotton pick and cycle I can come up with is bullish. So, uh, you know, I respect people that take a position. I could be wrong here. I've been wrong in the past. I'm sure I'll be wrong in the future. What I don't like are people say, well, on one hand, it might go up. On the other hand, it might go down. I can't tell you right now. We'll read the news. No, give me a position. That I respect. Even if you're wrong in the position, I hope you feel that way too. Um, I really respect people that have positions and they're willing to say, yeah, this is what I think. This is what I'm doing. And this is what I'm doing, bullish. Um, here's why. Here's the current dominant cycle pattern. From October until December, the market has rallied from 1950 to 2022, 77% of the time, almost 80% of the time at this particular juncture in time, if you will. And I think that's where we are now. In fact, you can see this chart was done a while ago. We've continued coming down right into this cycle low. 70% of the time we've gone higher. Twice it was a push. Two times this cycle was just flat out wrong. Let me show you. In 2018, the call for a cyclical low here didn't work. But the next uptick sure did work, didn't it? So we can look at that cycle low. So we see if this doesn't work, well, the next one coming in December certainly should. So there's 2018, 2014, there's a market low, there's a cycle low, yep, that little uptick, yep, market rallies. 2010, market's kind of stabilized, whoop, suddenly takes off, takes off again. That cycle pattern has a lot of significance to it, doesn't it? 1998, whoa, yay, baby, right at the low, big rally, pulled back, the uptick again we talked about. This is where we are now, this is where we'll be in December. 1986, right at the market bottom. Whoa, it went to the upside. 1982, market ran up, pulled back a little bit. There it goes. Cycle forces kick in, pull back, they kick in again. That's the dominant pattern. That's what I think where we are right here, right now, and what we should expect to take place in the market. 1966, going all the way back then. Again, look at that pattern. Right at the October lows in 1966, where a cycle say we should bought it, the market bottom runs up, pulls back, and takes off again. This is a pattern we've seen repeat and repeat and repeat. 
1962, the year I began trading. Well, we didn't call it right at the bottom, but close enough, bought here. Well, so what? We made it a little low for a bit and took right back to the upside, came up and took off again. So that's the current pattern that we're in now that I'd really like you to pay attention to. We can go all the way back to 1942, the year I was born. Mark is kind of going back and forth. We write into that cyclical time period when we should rally. And that doesn't. This cycle doesn't mean we're going to be coming down here. It just means get ready. There's a buy point here and there's a buy point here. Same pattern. We've seen it over and over and over. And that's the pattern we're in now. That's why I think we need to stay particularly bullish and on the long side of this market, looking for buy signals. These cycle charts, by the way, are done with TimingSolution.com. I don't have any affiliation with them. I don't get anything. I just am a user of their software, as I am of StockCharts.com. Uh, what a wonderful weekend we had in Seattle uh, this weekend. They had StockCharts.com uh, convention, and we had some, oh, my gosh, you should have seen the talent that was there, the presentations. If you ever get a chance to go to StockCharts.com, con again, do it. Uh, I was blown away by what I learned from the people. Okay, cycle unity. Can we combine all these cycles to make it better? United we stand, divided we fall. I think there is cycle unity, and I'd like to share that with you. What happens when all these cycles start to come together? Would that be a more significant time? And in fact, I'm pretty certain that it is. Now, I've always liked the idea of a combination of ingredients. So I want to focus a lot on cycle alignment. Not many people have talked about this. But what happens when several different time cycle periods pattern, they all top and bottom at the same time? Could that make it better? That having just one cycle that I show you, is, that's a really good cycle. But can we confirm that by, by putting additional cycles on top of that? And I think that we can. And, and I'd like to show that to you now. Uh, we're going to look at the short and long-term cycles going all the way back to 2022. But hold on. I'm only going to show you when these two are in conjunction. They both call for a rally. So see the gray lines, that's the cycle. But I'm only going to show you the times when they were both in agreement, saying that both cycles, the shorter term one is up and the longer term one is up. Notice the short term goes up, pulls back. The longer term is just up. That's the pattern or combination of two, a shorter term, and a longer term pattern. Now, what happens when we combine those together? Hold on to your popcorn guys and gals. Let's take a look. Clearly in 1950, the market went sideways for a while and the big bull market started as we would have expected based on the cycles. We come now to the next time we saw this in 1955, there should be a cyclical low, pretty much on target. Nice bull market. The bull market continues to the upside. So the combination, and notice a lot of times they're not in agreement. Uh, and that's what I found in my cycle studies was really interesting. If I can get two, three, or four of these all bullish, all at the same time, we have a much better idea that this is in fact going to be a very valid short or long-term where your time frame is, cyclical low in the market. Not necessarily cyclical low, a point where we should rally. Just the market hasn't come down much, but there's a rally point because they are in agreement. Coming forward now to 1959, they're all in agreement and the markets take off in phase. Why it works, sometimes just this red cycle itself doesn't see rally, sometimes just the blue cycle doesn't. When they both are saying we should rally, that's when we've seen the most significant rallies in the marketplace. Now, 1963, we should expect a bull move. Well, we got it and it should last for quite a while and we got it. So, like I said, it's a combination of ingredients that I'm really looking for. And when we can get that in cycles, they're coming together. That's what I think represents the best cyclical opportunities in the market to be long or to be short. 1966, the market bottom. Uh, look how they're both at the same time saying, yes, we should rally. We should start a rally. We start a rally. Have a dip and should rally more before we decline. That's been the pattern for the last 70 years in the marketplace. Does it mean it will report absolutely the same way this year? No, probably not. Close, yeah, probably so. So uh, the bias based on cycles is clearly bullish. Now, that may not be enough. We may also want to look at some fundamentals, and we'll be doing that in a little bit. But 
I've always believed in cycles, right or wrong. When I first started in markets, for some reason, that's one of the things that stuck in my head. So I've been driven by these things for a long time. Uh, but I've learned it's nice to back them up with something else. Okay, there's 1971 when the absolute best buying point came here. But as you can see, the cycles both came together right here saying we should rally. And we did. Again, I'm only showing times when the red and the blue are both together suggesting we should rally. A lot of times just on its own, it says we should rally and we don't. So I like to combine the two of them. Here's 1974, right at the low, they both turned bullish and the market went up and pretty much followed the pattern. Will it follow exactly? No, but the roadmap, you want to be bullish from here to here? Oh yeah, you should do. Yeah, we had a pullback. Yeah, the, that's a shorter term trend of the market. But the bias, which side of the market should I be working on here? It's really clear to me when these come together. Oh, here we are in 19. Uh, 79, 78, 79, actual low should, cyclical low should have been here. We finally got in phase with it. And again, same thing happened. I'm not moving the market plate. Again, it's not precise, but it certainly is suggestive of the general pattern, the dip and the rally, and the general direction the market's going to be going in. Coming forward now to 1986, uh, look what happened. There's this look where we should expect a buy point in the market. And that's the rally we should expect in the market. And again, it happened. So we see this. This is pretty repetitive now. We've seen a lot of examples of this, haven't we? 1991, same thing happened. Yeah. And we go to 1994, 95, same thing happened again. Go to 1998, there's the low. They're both in phase with one another. Same thing happens again. Uh, 2003, same thing happened again. 2007, same thing happened again. Nice rally in the market. 2011, there we are again. This has been so repetitive based on cycles. Now cycles, anything could be wrong in the marketplace. But based on cycles here, we are in 2015. The bias has been to the upside when these two cycles have come together. 2000. Um, 17, uh, it wasn't so good. The cycle lows were way back here. They were way early. There's probably a lesson there. This may be the lesson. If we are coming down and my cycle theory doesn't work, this last little uptick would be very bullish. That would be the end of the bear market. So watch for that. And we'll look at that slide in a moment. Remember, we're right about here now in October, right here. So at the end of the year, if we're still coming down, there's a really strong buy point. And both these cycles right in the middle of December. So guys and gals, let's keep that in mind. So here's where we are right here, right now. This is these two patterns have come together right now, right? They're both in unity. We had the big down day on last Friday. Everybody's frightened to death. One day probably doesn't mean much. A combination of days can, but one day, one day. But the longer term view, both cycles have now moved to the upside saying we should rally into February, March, have a dip, and another rally into May on the very long-term cycle with that little middle of December rally I talked about right there. So you might want to take a screenshot of that or write that down or come back and review this. That's what cycles are suggesting should happen now or into the future. That's where we should be. That's the, the roadmap, the path that I think stock prices will take. So are we up, up, and away? Well, maybe, but we probably need a caveat to that as well. I mean, clearly, I'm not the man of steel, okay? Um, anything can happen. So let's look at a few other things. This is really interesting. This is the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey. They measure how bullish or bearish people feel about the future. This is the most bearish they've been since 1980. They're really bearish in 2009, but not as bearish as everybody. Oh, my gosh, wherever I go, people are complaining. They don't think there's a future. They don't like the president or they do like the president. They don't like what's happening in Ukraine. There's all these problems. And everybody's really negative, just as negative as they were back here and back here and back here and back here. What would happen in 1980? That's exactly this little point in 1980 
in terms of stock prices is right there. Everybody was so doggone bearish on the market and the market took off. We can also look at stock charts to come. Look at my money flow divergent line. We made a new low in here, but not in accumulation in the market. We should be seeing uh, higher points in here. We haven't, we've got divergence in here. That's positive. That's another indication. I think it's about time for a rally. I think maybe, maybe we can use crude oil to predict interest mm -hmm. rates. And if we can predict interest rate, we've got a pretty good idea of stock prices. So interest rates are the black line, okay? That's from the Federal Reserve and the green line or the red line is just uh, crude oil prices. But they've been pushed forward. In other words, they're pushed forward about uh, eight months. So it's a leading indicator. So this peak in interest rate was known back here about almost a year prior to peaking because of the crude oil forecast. And this is a crude oil forecast now. It would suggest that we should have picked up an interest rate. We've done that. Now the suggestion is, because this is the forecast, this is what crude oil prices have done, and what should follow at interest rates is lower interest rates. So there's the pattern of it. And this is where I think we probably are now. Crude oil prices can predict stocks as well. Here's the crude oil prices uh, move forward. They've been inverted, but notice how closely stock prices have followed that, that this year. Also another sign that we probably should be getting to a rally of some sort in here uh, based on what I think is really the control. The whole world right now he uses energy. We're so energy dependent. If crude oil is the gold of long gone eras. It's now about crude oil. We all have to have energy. We're trying to convert to solar, to wind. Who knows what we're going to end up using. But right now, if you don't have energy, the lights are out. I also like to see what's going on with the PE ratio right now. I think there's value in the market. There's a good little formula we've used for many years. If you take the current PE today times 55 and subtract it from 2070, uh, you're going to get a number. You subtract from the long-term return of the S&P or the Dow about 10.46, and you find out current valuation. Well, today's the PE is about 15.69, the forward PE. We subtract that from 20.7. We get 12.0. Subtract that from 10.46, and the current return, we should outperform the averages by about 1.55%. Remember when this bear market started in the last year, PE ratios were really high. I don't know what they were, 28, 30, something like that. We've come way down. And when the PE ratio, the lower the PE ratio, the better the opportunity for a rally in the future. I mean, I've seen it at eight, I think twice in my life. They were like mortgages the house, get second, third, fourth mortgages, go to payday loans, get all the money you can get and buy stock. You hardly ever see that. But this general area we're in now, the PE ratio of 15, 12, 15, really bullish, there's value in the marketplace. And I think we've finally begun to get into a value area in prices in the market. That's really encouraging to me. I think that we've seen things beat up enough that in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and I think that's the best index of them all to follow, I know we've got the triple Q. All that NASDAQ stuff is a whole different market. It acts differently. It responds, but it's different than the industrial average. The industrial average, I think, represents the major companies as probably a better index to follow. But if you're a trader, then you'd want to be in the triple Qs and NASDAQ because that's hot and heavy market. That's for young, short-term trading people. I think elections matter. Let me show you that. Here's the election time bias. Look what happens at the end of October. This is a seasonal pattern. You can get that right in stockcharts.com and my true seasonal um, uh, uh, services that we offer there. This is what usually happens in October. We have a little bit of a dip, a rally, mid-month a rally. Then at the end of the month, whoa, we take off just before the election. I think elections can be really bullish in the marketplace. Uh, first of all, I'm going to get to that in a moment, but let's look at the month of October. What if you were to buy on the say the second or third trading day of October every year. Well, you would have lost money. But notice how we start to see positive numbers coming in, especially at the end of October. 
if you had bought on the 21st trading day, not calendar day, don't get this mixed up with calendar day. I am talking trading day here. If you had bought on the 21st trading day of October in the last 24 years, 23 times that made money. And we're going to have a five day hold here. So we're going to hold this for some time. The accuracy is 95%. That's pretty darn good. But the significant thing is look at all the profits at the end of the month. The end of October, it starts to see lots of rallies in it just before the election. My working theory is what happens is um, all these cycles kick in in October. People finally vote for whatever dirty dog they want to vote for. And they're just so happy to get those ads off TV. And, and we elect somebody and the future of America is in front of us again. So a lot of bullishness comes in election years. A lot. How much? Let's take a look. Midterm election years. We're in a midterm election year right now. If you were to buy the Dow on the first trading day in November, only, only in midterm election years, you had 12 winning trades, one loss in the last 13 election cycles. Remember, each one of these is four years. So we're using a lot of history to do this. Wow, that's pretty interesting, isn't it? So at the end of October, the first part of November, a lot of bullish is coming in the marketplace. Oh, I read the little things you guys and gals post on YouTube. I know you're very concerned. I think the Fed has done a pretty good job. But years ago, I read what Lewis Thomas McFadden said, the Federal Reserve is the most corrupt institution in the world, da, da, da. Yeah, I used to think that too. But how about a reality check? There's the Dow, there's basically the American economy. Have we had another 1929? No. Have we had another significant stock market crash? No. Have we had pullback? Yeah. But on balance, you know, they're not perfect, but they have not done a bad job. So the Cassandras who are saying, oh, they're going to destroy us again. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Reality check is they're not perfect. They're human. Try to adjust the economy. The world has got to be a heck of a hard job. On balance, they haven't done a bad job. Are we in a recession? Boy, that's a good question. Huh? I, you know, yes and no is my answer to it. If we look at the real-time Sham rule recession indicator, when it kicks up, we enter a recession. Well, we're not there yet. Interesting. It feels like a recession. A lot of recession indicators have kicked in, but a couple of the really major ones that I follow haven't. One that I think was probably the very best for most of us to follow is simply unemployment. When unemployment kicks up as it did here in the 80s, it did in the 90s, it did in 2000, did in 2007, 2008, or pandemic, uh, yeah, we went into recession, didn't we? It's been a really good indicator of when we're going into recession. Right now, the hardest thing to get in America is somebody to go to work for you. We blow that up. This is where we are. We're still down. Until this gets to above a 12-month moving average, I think we're probably not in a recession. So as I see it, you want to be long stocks, long bonds, and short inflation. That's my outlook as I see the markets. So until the next time we get together, guys and gals, let the good times roll. I think that's what's directly in front of us. Get ready for 2003. I'll have my 2023 forecast. Go to our uh, email list uh, at Larry Williams or just www.ireallytrade.com. And let's get ready for 2023 because guys and gals, I think it's up, up and away. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.